Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Edge of Tomorrow. It's a sci-fi military action film that's based on a novel, All You Need Is Kill, by Hiroshi Tsukurazaka. It stars Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, Brendan Gleeson, Bill Paxton, with Kip Gary, Dragomir Muzik, Charlotte Riley, Jonas Armstrong, Franz Demer, Mazasoshi Nikta, Tony Way, and Nora Taylor. And it's directed by Doug Lipman, who did Swingers, The Born Identity, and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The movie begins when an alien evasion, also known as the Mimics, have taken over continental Europe. The United Defense Force, named General Brennahan, was played by Brennan Gleeson, who ordered Major William Cage, who was a public affairs officer and former advertising executive, that's played by Tom Cruise, to cover a combat on the beach of France during the next day, which, which is filled with tons of Mimics hauling around. Unfortunately, Cage had objected to the dangerous assignment that he had to appear in and actually had threatened to use his public relations skills that it unfortunately wasn't trained for. So as a result, Brightingham decided to arrest him and winds up being knocked out and in handcuffs until he was awakening to the forward operating base at Head Road Airport, already being discovered as a deserter under the commands of Master Sergeant Farrell, who's played by Bill Paxton. And while a huge evasion had occurred for the human race, Cage had managed to kill a large mimic which suddenly dies as he was sprayed with an acid-like blood all over him. Then all of a sudden, he, he got stuck in a time warp, which apparently he wakes up at Head Road in the same way that, that he's been woken up and thought it was a dream. But it turned out it wasn't. So all this time he's being repeated over and over and over and over again. Like it was um, like the movie Groundhog's Day. Yeah, which has often become a comparison. But I think I would have considered this as a comparison to Source Code. Yeah, which is a really good film too. Yeah, it's a, I imagine that comparing that from a comedy to, to an action movie like this. But it works. Anyway, apparently no one had believed in the story knowing about the evasion that would fail. So at this rate, he winds up accounting the Angel of a Dawn, who's actually Sergeant Rita Boatowski, who's played by Emily Blunt, who actually recognizes his ability to anticipate events and tells him to locate her the next time he wakes up. Well, once he found Rita at Tetro, Together they meet up with a scientist named Dr. Carter, who's played by Nora Taylor, who actually has an experiment in mimic biology. In fact, Cage had learned that the kind of mimic he kills in his first loop is actually called an alpha, which resets time that gets repeated over and over whenever you die. And then, so becoming a biggest battle of them all, if once he gets to kill all the mimics in the advantage. Well, Cage had inherited this ability when he was dosed in Alpha's blood as they both died. But he read his ability in the previous battle actually had lost it after receiving a blood transfusion. She actually told Cage that they must hunt for the mimic's hive mind known as the Omega. So then they had to go to all the way up to the dam just to stop these these creatures, as well as the Omega, t to actually go back to the way they were, so it won't, it won't keep resetting time over and over and over again. And that's pretty much the entire story of this movie. And basically, I'm not going to give away the ending because it's a mystery. But after seeing this movie, I really, really enjoyed it a lot. I think it's one of the best 
sci-fi action movies I've seen so far this year. There's no doubt about it because this movie has been praised by critics everywhere. Um, it had a lot of um, a lot of hype that they went into it from other countries, yeah, everywhere. I mean, it, it had a, tons of hype over it. It's funny because I saw the trailer when I went to go see Godzilla, and I thought to myself, "Yeah, this has to be awesome." Anything with Tom Cruise is definitely worth a treat. I mean, everything from Mission Impossible to Oblivion and all the other films he have done in the past and the present, it's perfect. I mean, he's definitely worked well as an action star because he does do a lot of stunts. I mean, tons of great stunts in action movies. And it's, it's great that he's still doing all the stunts even in this film. Yeah, it was perfect. And while I was not a big fan of of War of the Worlds, though, I thought he was really excellent in that last movie, Oblivion, which is very similar to this movie, hard, hard to believe. It plays like it, too, but except it's, it's based on a novel. It felt more like a video game, like Halo. Yeah, in fact, the whole movie kind of reminded me of Halo. It's amazing, because I think the offer... Um, I actually read so far that the author of, of this book actually uh, wrote this story while playing video games. This was an interesting note. and Who would imagine that he would actually write a novel that, that's very similar to, to all the video games that he plays? It's, it's amazing. And that's the main reason why video games should always be around no matter what. Well, of course. <laughs> but yeah, Tom Cruise was actually very good in this movie. You know, playing a different role this time, and hard to believe, this is the kind of role where you know, you, you wind up becoming a coward at first, even though you're an officer. But he wasn't assigned to do a job this dangerous, so... I mean, this is really quite strange, even for him. But even for Cruise, he can play any role that he does. And he was very good in this one, so I loved it. Also, Emily Blunt. I mean, come on. I mean, this is like one of the greatest uh, young actresses who's been in so many independent movies over the years, but yet managed to play a tough sergeant in an action movie this fun. I mean, she, she definitely kicks ass in this movie. She, she even does a lot of stretching during that training mode scene that you saw. Yeah, especially when she was trying to... She did like some yoga. She was doing that big stretch all the way up. While well, she just saw you know, Cage. It's just awesome. She's wearing the suit known as the Angel of Dawn, and which has huge, huge machete knives were enough to kill all the uh, mimics out there and that was perfect I mean the suits were amazing the way they were built and the way they, they fixed it it was cool had a lot of great special effects that they went into it but they're trying to stop these mimics and the fact that they had to use the guns and everything it, it was oh man never thought I would see this in the movie also it has a great cast too I mean Besides Cruz and, and Blunt, we have Bill Paxton playing a sergeant, and a very good one at that, because he also stole the show. This was almost similar to his role in Aliens. And, <laughs> and what do you know, he's actually fighting against Aliens as well. <laughs> well, what a difference. And Blending Gleason is also very good as a general, even though he didn't get enough screen time that much. But that's okay. I mean, he was very good. And so was Nora Taylor, who played the scientist in the film. I mean, he, he had done some other great work. And great to see that he's playing an interesting scientist for, for a change. Of course, I would imagine seeing um, Gary Oldman in that role after his last film, Robocop remake, yeah, which I didn't care for. That was a shitty one. But he was good in that film, to be honest as a scientist at least, but why couldn't they she get cast in Edge of Tomorrow? That would have been perfect, but 
Nevertheless, Nora did a great job. But it had everything. And, um, and while I haven't read the novel, though, and I would have loved to, actually, it would have been nice if it became a Japanese animated series. And I find it strange, though, that, you know, considering that Tom Cruise got the role, that they really did change the age group, so it looked more like... Because since originally this was gonna... they were gonna cast, like, an 18-year-old or so, I guess they wanted to come up with some biggest changes so it could be, like, what it is. But I think it worked pretty well to have an adult in this movie. But <laughs> no. But let's face it, it's Tom Cruise. It came out in the summer of of June. It didn't do quite as well at the box office, mostly because of the competition with all the other films that came out. Tons of blockbusters that year. But it was worth it, and it's definitely worth watching many times already. In fact, you can watch it over and over and over and over and over again. And never get tired of it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it is coming out on Blu-ray and DVD on October 7th. So hopefully I might be able to get this movie and be able to watch it any time. If I ever get a chance. So let's hope so. so. Definitely check it out. You're in for a treat. I give Edge of Tomorrow... Surprisingly awesome, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.